this chapter we will be looking at rational expressions. In this lesson, we will be looking at rational word problems. So now in this final lesson, in this particular chapter, we're going to be just working through some word problems here. Um, but the word problems we're going to be working on are basically distance speed time problems. Okay, And remember that the formula uh, for distance is going to be speed times time. Or, uh, what's, what's typically more appropriate in a lot of these questions here, now not all of them, but a lot of them is, remember that time is going to be the distance okay, divided by your speed. Okay, distance divided by speed. Another thing that you need to remember here is that when you've got a, a fraction, because we, we might end up with a fraction here, the larger your denominator, the smaller the fraction. Okay, So remember that one-third and one-fourth, which one of these things is smaller? Well, one-quarter is smaller. Okay, One-third is larger than one-quarter. Now, this might, point in time, that might not seem like a, a really important fact, but actually it really is once we start working through this, and I'll, I'll show you why in a few minutes. Let's take a look at some, some examples here. Melanie drove 404 kilometers from Edmonton to Banff in the same length of time as Heidi took to drive 364 kilometers from Edmonton to Jasper. Melanie drove 10 kilometers an hour faster than Heidi. At what speed did each drive? Okay, so here's our problem. Uh, so what we know here is, okay, Melanie drove 404 kilometers from Edmonton to Banff. Okay, so 404 kilometers, there we go. And it took the same amount of time Heidi took to drive uh, 364 kilometers from Edmonton to Jasper. Now, here we go. We don't know how fast they're going. We're told how far they went, not how fast they're going. All we know is that Melanie drove 10 kilometers faster than Heidi. So it makes sense to call Heidi X here, and then Melanie would be X plus 10. Now, as soon as you do that, okay, as soon as you do that, you know the times here. How much time did it take Melanie to do that? Well, time is distance over speed. It doesn't matter to me how these two times compare, and you'll see here that it took the same amount of time. That doesn't matter to me when I'm filling in the chart. How much time did it take Melanie to go? It's just going to be this value divided by this value. So we do the same thing for Heidi. How much time did it take her? Well, 364 divided by that unknown x. Remember, it doesn't matter what Melanie did. Okay, it's Heidi's distance over Heidi's speed. So this is all the information that we need. That's what the purpose of this chart here, just to help us organize the information that we're pulling out of the word problem. Now we're going to move on and build the equation here. And the equation typically gets built, not, not always, Okay, just to be clear, not always, but typically. These questions are set up so that in order to come up with a, an equation, I have to look at time. I'm going to end up using these expressions right here. Now, in this case, we're told that it's the same amount of time. So that means that Melanie's time is going to be the same. Whoops, sorry, I did 634. I meant 364. Okay, 364 here, the same amount of time as it took Heidi. Okay, now we've got a rational expression that we need to, or rational equation that we got to solve. This is just like the the rational expressions we solved in the the previous lesson. So first of all, notice. Okay, is there any factoring that we can do? The answer is no. Notice that my non-permissibles here will be negative ten and zero. Okay, can't have those. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply this whole equation through by the common denominator, and that's just going to be the product of, of the two denominators, okay? So in this particular case here, and remember how that works, I'm going to pl plug those through into the numerators here. So 404 x, x plus 10 over x plus 10, so I can see a little bit of canceling there. This will be 364 x, x plus 10, all over x. Okay, now we're going to do a little bit of canceling here. I can cancel the x plus 10 with the x plus 10, and I can do that because x can't equal negative 10. Okay, I've already made that restriction, so that leaves me with 404x. Over here, the x's will cancel, and again, as long as x doesn't equal zero, but I've already got that, and so that gives us 364x plus 3640. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to move that 364x over to the other side. Okay, so I'm just going to subtract it from both sides here, and I'll get 40x 
is equal to 3640. And now my final step here will be to divide the 3640. I'm just doing this on the calculator off to the side here. And I'm going to get 91. Okay, great. So what does that tell me? That tells me, okay, because remember, x was Heidi's speed. If you go back to our chart here, this means Heidi is going 91 kilometers per hour. And now remember how this works here. What did they say about Melanie's speed? Well, Melanie's speed was 10 more than that. So just add 10 to that. Melanie is going 101 kilometers per hour. Okay, there we go. A trawler travels four times as fast as a tugboat. The tugboat requires 14 hours more to travel 70 kilometers than the trawler. If x represents the speed of the tugboat, then an equation that could represent this problem is which of the following? Okay, well, to answer this problem, uh, what we should probably do here is, is build our little chart here. So we've got a trawler and a tugboat. And then we've got our distance, our speed, and our time. Okay, so what does it say here? It says that the trawler travels four times as fast as the tugboat. Okay, so I don't know how fast the tugboat's going. We'll call that X. But I do know that the trawler will be four times that. Uh, the tugboat requires 14 hours more. Okay, now that's an interesting word. I'm going to come back to that in a second here. To travel 70 kilometers than the trawler. So they're both traveling 70 kilometers. Now, here we go. So we're going to figure out the times that it takes for each of these boats to go here. Now, time is going to be distance over uh, speed, distance over speed. Now, when I fill this in, I got 70 over 4x, 70 over x. Someone's going to say, but what about the 14? That has nothing to do with plugging in the times in the chart. If I asked you, how long does it take the trawler to, to make this trip here, and you, and you said 14 hours less than the tugboat, well, it doesn't tell me anything. Just like if I asked you, how long does it take the tugboat to go, and you said 14 hours more than the trawler, well, yeah, but that doesn't tell me anything. Once I know what X is, I will be able to tell you exactly how much time these are taking. That 14 hours is a comparison between these two. This is the amount of time it takes for the trawler. This is the amount of time it takes for the tugboat. Now, I'm going to set up an equation here. So 70 over 4x, 70 over x. Now, these are not equal. I need to add 14 to one side here. Okay? I need to add 14. Now, the, the mistake that people often make is they'll say, well, this guy went faster, okay? Or sorry, this guy went slower, my mistake. The tugboat goes slower, so he needs more time. No, 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 no. He goes slower, so he takes more time automatically. This does take more time. The, the trawler gets there super fast, and then his punishment for being fast is he has to wait. How long? 14 hours, okay? Trawler has to wait 14 hours. Now, we can also see this by just looking at the, the, equa the, the expressions here. 70 over 4x, because the denominator is larger, the value is smaller. 70 over x, because this is smaller, the value is larger. So I have to add the 14 to the smaller value. Now, let's go over here and check and see which one of these is it. Uh, 70 over x plus, okay, well, it's not, it's not plus, okay? Because it said very clearly that it was four times as fast. So it, it can't be either one of these two. Now what have we got here? 70 over 4x minus 70 over x equals 14. Well, let's just take a quick look. What's going on here? Um, the 14 here, well, if look at both of these equations. There's, in both cases, the 14 is positive. So if I want that to be positive, I'm going to leave that there. And so I'll bring this over. It'll be 70 over x. I have to bring this one over. So minus 70 over 4x. Ah, that's D. The equation that I would use to solve to figure out how fast they're going is equation D. The speed of a plane is seven times as great as the speed of a car. The car travels three hours longer than the plane to travel 315 kilometers. Find the speed of both. Okay, now in this question here, right off the bat we're told that the speed of the plane is seven times uh, as great as the speed of the car. So don't know how fast the car is going, but I do know that this plane is going seven times that fast. So that's, a, that's an easy thing to throw into the chart here. The car travels three hours longer. Okay, now that's a comparison between these two times. I'm not going to put the three hours in it. It's not that the, the plane takes three hours, the car takes three hours. 
okay? It's the three hours longer, that's comparison. So that's gonna probably pop out in my equation. Uh, and then they're both, they're both traveling 315 kilometers, okay? Now, as soon as I know the distance, I can give you an expression for time because time is distance over speed, distance over speed. Now, I'm just going to check something here real quick. Oops, whoops. Sorry, I'll let you know in just a second what I'm doing here. And there it is. This is equal to 315 divided by 7 and x here. Well, 315 divided by 7 is 45. So I can actually simplify that expression a little bit before I get to the equation which is kind of good here. <clears throat> so now I've got a simplified expression for both of those. Now, here we go. Here's the, here's the plane, and here's the car. Now, which one of those is quicker? Well, the plane's quicker, the plane's far quicker, which means the plane is gonna get there in less time. How much less time? Three hours. That was the bit of information that we were given in the question here. So in order to make these two times equal, in order to set up an equality with them, I have to add three extra hours to the faster vehicle because that person has to wait now three hours for the other guy to catch up. The plane, whoever's in the plane is gonna get there early, three hours later, the car's gonna show up. So the plane trip plus three hours is the same as the car trip. All right, now, uh, I'm going to get, I'm going to multiply through, I'm going to solve this uh, by, well, applying the same tools that I've been using with rationals the whole way here. I'm going to first of all identify that x can't equal zero, and then I'm going to multiply this whole equation through by that common denominator. Now, in this case, that'll be 45x over x plus 3x over 1 is 315x over x. And now, those x's will cancel, and we're left with 45 plus 3x is equal to 315. This works out, this is working out just wonderfully here. Uh, the numbers became so nice to work with, so now all I'm gonna do is move that 45 over. 3x is equal to 270 when you subtract. And then when you divide, we're gonna get that x is equal to 90. So what does that tell us? Well, it tells us that the car travels 90 kilometers per hour, okay? Now the plane, we know, based on what it says up here, that the plane travels seven times faster than that. So that means the plane must be going 630 kilometers per hour. And so those are the two bits of information that we wanted to yank out of this problem. Kate and Maddie both drove for 30 kilometers each. Kate drove 12 kilometers per hour faster than Maddie and arrived five minutes sooner than Maddie. Find the speed of each. Okay. Now the information given in this problem here needs to be adjusted a little bit and I hope, I hope you see the issue uh, in the question um, right away here. But first of all, we know that both of them are traveling 30 kilometers, so 30 and 30. Uh, we don't know how fast they're going here, but Kate drove 12 kilometers an hour faster than Maddie. So Maddie's my X, Kate is going to be my X plus 12, which means immediately I can tell you their times, or at least give you an expression for times. Now, there's a five minute difference between the two of them, but that, again, that's a comparison between the two, so I'm not gonna worry about that right now. It took uh, Kate 30 over X plus 12, and it took Maddie 30 over X, okay, to make this trip. Now, I'm just gonna build the equation here. So, 30 over X plus 12, and 30, over x, these are not the exact same thing. There is a little bit of a difference between them. There's a five minute difference, but herein lies the problem. The time thus far for our, our speed is in kilometers per hour. Okay, so if I throw in, for example, five minutes into this equation, no matter where I put it, if you put the number five in here, this equation is going to interpret that, uh, is gonna try to interpret it consistently, and that would have to, that looks like five hours. So what I need to do here is convert five minutes into some, some portion of an hour, and it turns out five minutes, okay, is equal to, I should do it right like this, is equal to one-twelfth of an hour. That's just five over 60. Five minutes over 60 minutes reduces to one-twelfth. Now, who gets the additional five minutes? Who gets there first? Okay, well, it says that Kate gets there first, so Kate is gonna to have to wait one twelfth of an hour. 
Now, to simplify this, first of all, I'm going to identify my non-permissibles. In this case, that's going to be 0 and negative 12. Put that off to the side there. And now I'll multiply by that common denominator. And because everything is as simplified, as simple as it's going to get, okay, I'm just going to multiply through by that x, x plus 12. So this is going to be 30 x, x plus 12 over x plus 12 plus x. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, wow. I <laughs> completely forgot a value. Sorry, in my denominator, there should be an extra 12 because of that denominator right here. So there's going to be an extra 12 here. And so this is going to be x, x plus 12 times 12, all over 12. And this will equal 30 x times x plus 12 times 12, all over x. And then out here, we'd state, OK, and x can't equal 0 or negative 12. Now, here, the x plus 12s will cancel. And up in the numerator, we've got 30 x and 12. So that's going to be 360 x. Plus, here the 12s will cancel. I'll be left with x squared plus 12x when I distribute the x through. So just the 12s that went away. Here, uh, I, I wish there was more. It's just the x's. Okay, so now this is going to be 30 times 12 is going to be 360 times x. So 360x. Oh, well, I like that, though, because there's, there's one on both sides, which means those will end up canceling. But then I've got this 30 times 12 times another 12 inside there, which is going to get me 4,320. Now, to simplify this, first of all, I notice that the 360x's go away, which is wonderful. I've got a quadratic left over, so I'm going to bring that 4,320 over to this side right here. Set that equal to 0. OK, OK, well, here's, I'm running into a bit of a difficulty here because I, I mean, off the top of my head, I have no idea how to factor 4,320 so that the numbers differ by 12. So I'm, I'm going to get lazy here because I already know that there's a formula I can use. I'm going to use the quadratic formula. So x is going to equal negative b, which is 12, plus or minus the square root of b squared. Now, b squared, I know right now, is going to be 12 squared or 144. Now, this is going to be minus 4 times a, which is 1, times c, which is negative 4, 3, 2, 0. So negative 4 times 1 times 4, 3, 2, 0. OK, turns out we're going to get positive 1, 7, 2, 8, 0, because the negatives will cancel. This is all going to be over 2 times 1, the a value. All right, now, if I take 144, plus 1,000, sorry, 17280. What I'm curious about here is whether or not that number has a nice square root. Like that ends up being uh, 17,424 over 2. Now let's just take a quick look here. Square root of that answer is, oh my gosh, look at that. It turns out that's plus or minus 132 over 2. All right. Now, Remember that this is speed. This is Maddie's speed. If you take negative 12 and minus 132 over 2, you're going to get negative speed. It doesn't make any sense for her to be driving backwards. So it's got to be negative 12 plus 132 over 2. So negative 12 plus oh, 132 divided by 2, it turns out x is equal to 60. And so that means Maddie is going 60 kilometers per hour. And so Kate, as a result, must be going 72 kilometers per hour. There you go. A jet flew 4,200 kilometers from Edmonton to Miami. On the return trip, the speed of the jet was 100 kilometers an hour faster for a total flying time of 13 hours. Answer the following questions. Okay, so this question is actually leading us really step by step through this whole thing. So we're kind of ending this lesson on a very step by step example for you to refer back to. So a jet flew the 4,200 kilometers from Miami to Edmonton. So 4,200. Now the return trip will be the same distance. Okay. Uh, on the return trip, the jet was 100 kilometers an hour faster. So there's our trip two coming back was 100 kilometers an hour faster. So we just add that on here, okay? 
Now it says the total flying time is 13 hours. Now that again is a relationship between these two. Remember that to get the values that go into these two spots here, all I have to do is take that distance divided by the speed. Distance divided by the speed. Okay. And so now, when you look at this question here, write a rational expression to represent the total tra uh, traveling time. Okay, well that's going to be 4,200 over x plus 4,200 over x plus 100 is equal to 13. The total flying time. So we add those two together. Excellent. That's the equation. Now the next question here says algebraically show that the correct equation from the above form can be simplified to obtain this. Okay, well that's kind of gross there, but whatever. Here we go. So we're going to take our equation here, 4,200 over x plus 4,200 over x plus 100 equals 13. This is our starting point here. Now, uh, the denominators are as, as simple as they're going to get there. So what we're going to have to do here is we're going to multiply by the common denominator, x, x plus 100. We're just going to multiply them together with the understanding that x cannot equal 0 or negative 100. Now when you multiply that through, we're going to get 4,200 times x times, uh, I don't know why I wrote it all weird like that, x plus 100 over x plus 4,200x, x plus 100 all over x plus 100 equals 13 times x times x plus 100. Okay, and again, and again, I, and I'm going to run out of room here, so I'm, I'm going to just understand this is going to be that fact that x can't equal 0 or negative 100 should be there. Now the x's are going to cancel and I'm going to be left with 4,200x uh, plus, what is that, 420,000. Here the x plus 100's will cancel, I'm going to be left with 4,200x. And over here I'm going to get 13x squared Okay. Plus, what is that going to be? That's going to be a 1,300x. Now, I'm really encouraged by the fact that that 13x uh, squared popped up because that's what it should be there. Now, I'm going to bring everything over to the other side of the equation. So this will end up being 0 is equal to, well, I had a 13x squared there. Now, let's just take a quick look at this. I've got 4,200x, 4,200x. Well, it's going to be 8,400x. And when I bring that over, I'm going to subtract that from the 1,300. So that's going to be 1,300 minus 8,400x. And there is my negative 7,100x. And then when I brought that positive 420,000 over, that's what I get. Negative 420,000. So that's the equation I was looking for. Wonderful. Now I'm going to use that and the quadratic equation, or quadratic formula, to solve for this. So x is going to equal the negative of the b value, which was negative 7,100, plus or minus the square root of, okay, here we go, negative 7,100 squared. Notice that I'm leaving the negative inside the brackets, because when I square it, the negative should go away. Minus 4 times a, 13, oh, and then here we go, times 420,000, all over 2a, 13. Okay, so first of all, this is going to be 7,100. That's, that's the easy part here. Now, this is going to be negative 7,100 squared. And actually, probably put this underneath here so you can see that. Negative, whoops, sorry, I did that too quick. I've got to close those brackets there. I've got to delete that square, close the brackets, and then square it. So negative 7,100. Uh, minus 4 times 13 times, uh, sorry, that was negative, my mistake, negative 420,000. Okay, uh, negative 420, 1, 2, 3. Okay, so under my radical symbol, I'm getting a whopping 72,250,000 all over well, 2 times, well, you can't even see that. 2 times 13 is 26. Okay. So now I'm going to take the square root of that gigantic number. And I can't believe it, but it worked out to be a nice number. 8,500 over 26. 
Now we're left with two possibilities here. It's either going to be 7,100 plus 8,500 and then I divide that by 26 to get 600 or it's going to be 7,100 minus 8,500 divided by 26 to get approximately negative 53, whoops, negative 53.85 and then whatever. But that doesn't make any sense because that implies that, that uh, on that trip we were flying backwards at 50, roughly 54 kilometers an hour. So therefore, the answer here has got to be, um, okay, it says determine the routes of the, to the nearest tenth of a kilometer per hour. Well, okay, 600 kilometers per hour makes the most sense. Now the next question says, how long did it take to fly from Miami to Edmonton on the return flight? Okay, well on the return flight, remember, we were going 600 kilometers an hour faster. 600 was the flight from Edmonton to Miami. So therefore we're going 700 kilometers per hour. And so our time is going to be 4,200 divided by 700 kilometers per hour. For, whoops, and then 4,200 divided by 700 should be six. And there it is, there's our time, six hours.